Okay, hi everybody. Welcome to our webinar on uh, real-time CG movie making with iClone. I'm your host, Kai Neve, and I'll be uh, running you through a little bit of uh, how iClone can be used to uh, to help you create uh, your own movies, uh, your own trailers, stuff like that. Um, we're going to be focusing a little bit less on the previs aspect uh, in this webinar and a little bit more on trying to refine the visual quality of your uh, of your project. Uh, using lighting and uh, and uh, ambient occlusion and all kinds of uh, different features like that. Uh, so what I'm going to do first, we're going to go through a little bit of a PowerPoint uh, presentation just to explain to you a little bit of what we're doing here. And then I'm going to give you a live demo. And the live demo should last about uh, half an hour to 40 minutes. And then we'll have a QA session at the end. Um, so on the right-hand side in your uh, little go-to webinar window there, you can feel free to post any questions throughout the webinar. Uh, we will answer, I will answer those questions at the end of the webinar. Uh, so post them in the little questions box there, and I'll get to those as soon as the webinar ends. So let's get started then. Um, let's go to our uh, PowerPoint here. And okay, so uh, this is the outline of what we're going to talk about today. First of all, we're going to talk about what is uh, Previs. So uh, we're going to talk about, you know, iClone for Previs, which is one of the main uh, main features of iClone, uh, the main uses of iClone for people in the movie industry. Uh, we're going to talk about previs to final production. And so in this section here, we're going to talk about how you can, you know, improve your previs to actually make really good quality trailers uh, for your uh, for your movie or for your game or whatever. Uh, and after that, we'll talk about the advantages of iClone and uh, how you can be used in movie production. And then we'll talk about movie production showcases. Uh, so we have a few of those that we can go through. Some really cool examples of how iClone is used uh, to create high-quality movies. And then I'll do a quick case study just to, so, just to show you a little bit about uh, how it can be used. Um, we're going to do a King Kong uh, previs case study briefly. So let's start off with uh, the first question. What is previs? Uh, previs is uh, the... Let's see, let me just close this down here. <laughs> a function to visualize complex scenes in a movie before filming. So basically, you're getting a little preview of what your movie is going to look like before you actually start filming and creating the movie. So you can see you start from uh, the idea where you uh, think up the, the, the idea of the movie. Uh, then you look, do a little bit of uh, design, you know, in your head and maybe sketches on paper and stuff. And then the pre-production uh, section, this is where pre comes in. And uh, then you move on to production and post-production. Uh, so let's go into the next slide, and um, you may wonder about previs in the in the film industry. Is it really a, is it really a big deal in the film industry? Well, you can take a look at, a, at the example here we have on the screen. Uh, you can see between the first Iron Man and the third Iron Man, um, the number of previs artists they had on the movie uh, grew by uh, many many times. So basically, in in uh, in the film industry, previs is becoming a better example or more used in the industry uh, for a number of reasons, which I'll get into in just a moment. Uh, now, there's a number of different uh, types of previs as well. Uh, the first type of previs is pitch previs, and this is normally um, done through the in the idea stage of uh, of the movie. If you want, if you're wanting to get funding through a Kickstarter or whatever uh, for your movie, you want to kind of show people that you have the potential to create a cool movie. And this is kind of what we're going to talk about in this uh, in this uh, webinar right here. We're going to talk more about how you can create that really nice uh, pitch previs trailer to gain uh, investment, to gain uh, funding uh, for your production. Um, so that's in the idea stage. And as you can see here, it determines 80% of the confidence level if the producers want to invest or not. So if you have uh, you know, just, just this idea, this PowerPoint, you come up to people with a PowerPoint, they're probably not going to be that inspired. But if you have a really cool movie trailer um, and you show that you can do this uh, really fast, then they probably have a lot more confidence in your abilities. Um, so then we'll move on to design previs. So design previs is where you're basically uh, setting the outline for all of your uh, all of your stuff, all of your scenes. You're creating assets, uh, or rather downloading assets, or creating them, or or getting them for free off the internet. Um, all sorts of things. And uh, then the pre-production stage here is where you're making the the animation. Uh, you're doing the camera work, the basic camera work, uh, the quick animation. And this does, this stuff doesn't have to be too detailed, as you can see on the right hand side there. The uh, top picture, the Iron Man, is a little bit uh, sketchy, but that's just the previs stage. And later on, they refine the graphics, the textures, the lighting, and all that stuff. Uh, this tech previs is just for your basic um, uh, camera work and animation. And then we move on to the, pr on to the production stage. And when you're doing the production, uh, one cool thing about iClone 
is you can bring it along on, onto the onto the set, and you can modify things uh, live in real time on the set. So you can kind of move move blocks around, move your uh, stage around, move items around on your stage. Choose a different background. Uh, you can use iClone in combination with uh, um, um, some other software to create uh, backgrounds on the green screen. And then you go to the post-production stage. So post-production is after the uh, production is finished and the director has his second uh, glance and he says, well, you know, uh, maybe we could change this, maybe we could change that. And so you can quickly run into your previous project again and you can show him what it would look like from that camera angle, uh, what it would look like from this camera angle. So, you know, they're always having second uh, thoughts, artistic freedoms and all that stuff. Uh, so it's, it's useful to have that project that you can bring up at any time and you can uh, show the director what, uh, what, his, what, his image, what his vision would look like um, in that situation. Um, so here's a couple of uh, benefits of Previs. Uh, the main benefit for sure is uh, camera motion. So if you have, uh, you know, your cameras in iClone, you can set the position, you can set the angle, you can set the lenses, all sorts of different things, all sorts of different features on the camera you can set very easily in iClone. And I'll show you how to do that later in the live demo. There's a number of different uh, camera parameters that you can set um, to define what your scene will look like. Uh, from different angles. That's basically how the audience sees your story. So that's the most important uh, thing to get to get taken care of right away at the beginning. Uh, the second uh, advantage of previs is the layout. So where are your actors standing? Uh, where 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 are your scene props? Where is this bus? Like uh, how is this car going to hit this person? Or where where does this window shatter? Um, those are kind of all the things that you take care of in the layout stage. Uh, then we move on to timing. So timing is essential, especially for particular scenes such as action scenes. Um, you want to make sure the timing and the and the and the camera switching are completely accurate, are very um, on the button, so you can actually create that feeling that you want to create and express that to your audience. And also, obviously, sound effects and uh, dialogue are super important as well. And we'll talk about the uh, the dialogue as well as the sound effects later on in the live demo as well. So, as well, like I mentioned before, fundraising is very important uh, and. Previs is a really good way to get that fundraising, um, whether it be with the uh, high quality trailer or just a quick, uh, a quick tech quality uh, trailer uh, for your movie. You want to kind of do that stuff to kind of help people, help your producers, help the investors to visualize uh, your dream and what you want to uh, create for this film. And you can also build consensus as well, so people can agree on on one thing if they see it. But if you're just kind of talking about it, people have different images in their mind. Whereas if you have previs, they can all see the same image. And of course, uh, the efficient team communication, what I just talked about as well. Um, and you can uh, visualize the ideas in action. It's a lot more of a visual medium, obviously, uh, rather than just talking about it, writing stuff, uh, writing still images down on paper. Uh, the uh, previs is a lot more beneficial than that. <clears throat> and then of course, you can match with the post-production results. So like I mentioned in post-production, if the director wants to change his mind about something, um, you know, you can go ahead and take care of that. The risk reduction aspect here is basically you're, you're, you're saving a lot of time on, uh, on uh, money that you would normally spend on setting up your stage in real life or money that you would rather uh, spend on, uh, you know, filming different stuff, wasting camera film or wasting uh, digital footage, um, whereas you could just simply preview it um, in iClone instead. So that's the risk reduction and saving time and money. And you can see we have a few quotes uh, down here from a few... Um, well-known directors, and that's basically uh, shows you in a nutshell uh, the advantages of previs. So on from previs to final production. So in the final production, uh, this is kind of your production workflow uh, generally. We we I, I brought this up in a previous slide, uh, but you can see that uh, you have the idea, and then you design your characters, and then you go into the pre-production stage. Uh, after that, you go to the production. Um, this is using iClone. So if you're using iClone for production. You're, you're going to want here to uh, refine your lighting, refine your materials, your camera work, and uh, everything to make it look visually amazing. And then in the post-production, like I mentioned, it's the same as previous. You can retrieve those modifications for directors quite easily. So the first thing is the idea. So you come up with an idea. You just click and drag a bunch of stuff onto your scene. You can see we have three random things, a big troll, an old gentleman, and a drum set. So you can just kind of click and drag um, stuff from your library onto your scene and think, um, you know, uh, how could these three guys work together? Um, you know, what, what's the story with these with these people on the scene? And that's where your ideas come from. That kind of helps to inspire you. And uh, for Michael, it's really easy just to click and drag those items onto your scene. And then you go to the design aspect, and you kind of, um, you know, think about, oh, you know, would this character look better 
you know, with uh, with ponytails or uh, with pigtails rather and a, and a pink shirt? Or would he look better as a war veteran? You kind of just kind of play around with ideas and, and design different characters, and that kind of helps to uh, inspire the creative workflow as well. And on the right-hand side, we have that image, uh, you know, with the, uh, the house there. You can kind of design um, your set as well. Uh, so do I want a picture here? Where do I want the sun coming from? Um, you know, what sort of uh, background, what sort of wallpaper do I want? And that's all, all the kind of stuff you take care of in the design stage. And then the pre-production stage. So this is where you're kind of, um, like I mentioned, testing out scene props. The cinematography uh, is, def is um, the camera work as well as, uh, you know, the where the characters are in your scene. And that's the super important thing, uh, super important aspect of filmmaking is the cinematography. And that's how, uh, that's one of the main things that iClone helps to work out. Um, the sound effects as well as the timing as well. So um, you can see there's different aspects to the pre-production stage. That's the previous stage. And then when you get to production. So um, basically these two scenes here, they're both scenes that I've created in iClone. Uh, the top scene with the image there, that's the one we're going to be uh, looking at in this webinar. And so this one is basically, it looks pretty good for iClone because we've done some proper lighting, uh, adjusted the materials, uh, and created some nice camera work um, to create a final production. And uh, I'll show you how to do all that stuff in a moment. And then in the post-production stage. So here's a very good example of, you know, post-production. Uh, say, for example, the top left picture there, that's your first um, scene. So you have that camera moving around, and the lighting is a little bit different. And the director says, you know, maybe we could do a, a, a kind of a bird's eye shot from this explosion. And how do we change that? You know, like in, without previs, it would take you uh, a lot of, a lot of, um, you know, you have to refilm the whole thing or else uh, and show the director one more time. And that would take a lot of resources, a lot of time. But with iClone, of course, it's just simply uh, clicking and dragging your camera up and moving it around a little bit differently. And then you can get a totally different angle and your creative uh, expression is completely different. All right, so let's talk about iClone then, the advantages of iClone. Uh, I'm sure you all know, most of you are uh, at least have a trial version of iClone. So uh, iClone's a 3D animation tool. We have digital actors, environments, visual effects, drag and drop editing, powerful physics, Microsoft Connect Ready Motion Capture, and all sorts of other cool stuff that we'll talk about in the next slides. So the first one is animation ready characters for immediate performance. So if you're doing previs, this is a super useful tool. You can bring in any character, and as you can see on the bottom right here, you can take the same character and you can modify their their uh, facial appearance to kind of create different characters from the same from the same model. So you can just totally change their eyes, change their mouths, all the facial features, give them different hair, and you can have completely different characters as a result. Um, and that's um, through facial modification, which is in iClone. And of course, the uh, the different cloths as well. Um, I forgot to mention here the uh, different clothing you can uh, create for your character. You can create your own clothing or you can just simply buy them from the content store or our marketplace. And then of course you can preview your motions without animation skills. So here we have an example of Connect MoCap uh, where you're basically uh, creating the motions by yourself um, through uh, motion capture. And on top of that we also have you know the huge motion library of uh, I think we have 600 motions in iClone 5 that are available for you to use and there's unlimited amounts of uh, other motions that you can purchase from the content store. You can also find motions online as well and import them into iClone if you have 3D Exchange. And then we have the uh, all the free content you can find online. So this is the Google Warehouse. Uh, you can go here and you can find all sorts of free models and bring those into your scene. Uh, you can bring videos into your scene. You can bring images into your scene. I'll show you how to bring videos into your scene uh, later on in this uh, live demo. And here's what I mentioned about the uh, content store, all sorts of different motions, all sorts of different characters, character bases, and all that fun stuff. And then, um, you know, we can still you can tell your storytelling with the visual camera tools. Uh, like I mentioned before, uh, if you have your cameras uh, available in iClone, you can modify them in all sorts of different ways and just kind of manipulate them uh, in your scene to create that sort of story, that sort of uh, timeline that you want. And that's a very easy thing to do in iClone, a very difficult thing to do in real life. So you can see the advantages right away, uh, simply just with the camera, uh, the availability of the, and the flexibility of cameras. Uh, and then there's the video, video compositing, uh, virtual reality. You can see a picture of me in front of the green screen there and how we composited that into uh, one of our scenes. And that's pretty simple stuff to do. Um, you know, you just need to get uh, Pop Video, which is our, uh, our compositing software. And you can take that and move it, uh, bring it directly into iClone, and it's automatic uh, green screen removal. 
So it's fairly simple, a uh, fairly simple process. And then uh, we also have an open animation pipeline with other professional 3D tools. So if you use Max, uh, Maya, you know, Daz, anything like that, even Blender, you can bring your characters and your animations into iClone uh, with 3D Exchange. So uh, you can just, uh, your characters, you can just remap them um, in 3D Exchange. It's a two-click process if you're using any of these software below. And then motion retargeting. So your, your character is automatically, all of the motions are retargeted to your, to your imported character rigs from whatever software. All right, so let's talk about our user showcase then. So we have a few of them. Um, the first one is this Play-Doh's Reality Machine. This is a recent one. Uh, you can see the IMDb rating there, a uh, pretty decent IMDb rating. This is a, um, a film by independent uh, movie director Miles Sorensen who actually uh, used Icon for certain sequences in the film, certain uh, kind of dream sequences, almost like Matrix-type sequences. And uh, the rest of it is all is all uh, uh, real life. Um, so it's... Um, in real life, and then there's certain uh, certain scenes where it's uh, taking care of an icon, and they're playing some sort of a uh, you know um, uh, alternate reality game. Uh, but I haven't watched the film myself, but uh, you can definitely check it out. And uh, we've talked a lot with uh, with Miles, and uh, he says it's the perfect kind of tool for animation and uh, for characters as well. So he chose Icon as a as a um, tool for his final production. So you can see all of the icon, all of the uh, animation and all of the CG scenes in here are actually straight out of icon. There's no other software used. Uh, and then we have, uh, here we have Ange Andre Peisker. He's uh, from Germany. And here's a film that he's uh, been been working on. Uh, this is just a trailer, a couple scenes from the trailer. And this is a really uh, cool visual result from icon. You can see the, uh, the, the very good visual results that he's created in icon. And he says that the, the video effects, the VFX, are very easy to implement in iClone, and he uses them in every scene um, of the endless space trailers. So this is a very uh, good example of, you know, how you can use iClone in, as an end result for CG movie making. And then we have uh, um, the Underwater Realm by uh, Realm Pictures, and this is a uh, UK production, and they used Connect Motion Capture. They used uh, all sorts of iClone tools to do an Basically, a lot of this uh, movie is taking is done underwater. Um, so, you know, underwater filming is quite difficult. So, what they did to save time is they actually used icon characters and these icon to kind of have their characters to to map out their designs, to map out their uh, their scenes and everything like that, uh, and kind of do it underwater in icon before they actually did it underwater. And that saved them a lot of time. Uh, it made them easier to shoot their scenes underwater when all the actors can kind of visualize and see what they're doing uh, before they're actually going to be underwater. And then we have Vega Studio in India who also uses iClone a lot for previs and they use it for uh, final productions as well, such as movie videos. Uh, the example you see here is just a very simple previs, but uh, Vega Studios uh, from India, they also do a lot of, um, you know, uh, uh, Bollywood stuff um, and they use iClone for a lot of that as well. So it's a very good example. And then uh, Jimmy Kimmel, you might may be familiar with Jimmy Kimmel. Um, uh, Jesse Griffith is one of the head animators at Jimmy Kimmel, and he uses iClone and uh, Reillusion tools all the time to uh, to kind of for basically for uh, you know because Jimmy Kimmel you're doing stuff every day and you need to whip up animations uh, really quickly and whip up characters really quickly. And iClone is a really good tool for uh, for uh, artists under time constraints, and uh, so that's what uh, Jesse Griffith is using at uh, Jimmy Kimmel as well. And then we have Nikola Tesla uh, from Bulgaria. He's using it as a previs uh, for commercials. So he does commercials. This one, this example here is from Toyota, and he used uh, Icon as a previs tool for this as well. So then uh, we'll quickly move on to our case study. And uh, this one is uh, King Kong, and this is from one of our uh, veteran developers, uh, Small Wonder Studios, uh, Mark Pleasant. Uh, if you're familiar with the Icon community, you may be familiar with him. I'd really recommend checking out his uh, YouTube channel, uh, Small Wonder, Small W Studios. Uh, he has a lot of really good tutorials. So if you're just learning iClone, you're getting the getting the learning the ropes. Uh, basically, Small Wonder Studios, Mark Pleasant has some really excellent tutorials that I, I recommend checking out. They're very entertaining to watch as well. Um, so definitely check those out if you have time. So here's an example of uh, you know using the uh, iClone for stage and set uh, for your previs. Um, you can see this scene from King Kong right here. On the left-hand side, we've used a content pack, uh, the, the uh, skyscrapers in Metro City. This is a content pack available in our content store, and you can simply bring those in, um, bring all those items in, and create your kind of uh, your your city scene. So this is just low poly low poly buildings that you can whip into your scene and uh, create your city in no time. 
And then for the sky, you can actually bring in your embedded content. You can, uh, or you can use the embedded content, or you can bring in your own photos as well. So if you have a high-resolution photo of a sky, just bring it into iClone, and you can use it as your background. And I'll show you that in just a moment in the live demo. And then there's physics props as well. So if you're having, you know, um, things crashing about in your scene, you can definitely take advantage of the physics props. You can see the car crashing through those barrels in the uh, bottom left there. And on the right, we have the Empire State Building. And this Empire State Building was taken directly from Google Warehouse. So it's actually a free model. Uh, you just go to Google Warehouse, download the FBX file or the uh, Google SketchUp file, and you can bring that into 3D Exchange and convert it into iClone format to use in your scene. So that's a really cool and, and really uh, budget-saving uh, feature that you can use with iClone. Uh, and then the characters, like I mentioned before, all the characters are fully customizable. So we have an example of uh, you know Chuck and Gwyn in the top right there. And we also have in the bottom right, you can see uh, facial fitting. So what this does is you can actually take a 2D image of a face. So any model's face, you can take a 2D image and what iClone does is it fits that onto a 3D model. And you, you can create a perfect, a perfect copy of uh, Nami Watts uh, for your movie. Um, you know, it's not going to look exactly like the actress, but it's a very good representation. And it looks uh, very good for, uh, for CG. And then also you have the option to customize your character's clothing as well. Like I mentioned, we have these things called clone cloth bases, uh, which allow you to you know, create your own designs or we have a number of excellent developers in our marketplace and our content store that actually do this and they, they sell their designs on the marketplace and the content store so you can use those without having to create your own. And uh, for other characters as well, we have um, this character King Kong. This character was taken from, uh, from Maya and brought into 3D Exchange. And you can kind of just uh, map, this, uh, map the bones of this model and you can apply human animations to him. The other option is you can import him as a non-human character and you can do frame by frame animation as well. We won't get too much into that in this webinar, but you can check the, our YouTube channel. We have tons of tutorials that talk about, um, you know, converting characters in 3D exchange. And then the special effects. We'll deal with a little bit of special effects in, uh, in this webinar here. Uh, we have particle effects. We have, uh, content packs that have explosions and all kinds of crazy stuff. So uh, in this scene where the, the, the airplanes are kind of shooting at the, uh, at the monkey uh, or at the gorilla or the King Kong, whatever, uh, you basically can uh, use these particle effects to create the illusion of, uh, you know, machine gun fire or uh, smoke and all that stuff. We'll talk about the smoke later. And once again, I want to talk about the cameras as well. You know, these, uh, these camera angles are very easy to establish. I'll talk to you a little bit about um, getting camera angles ready as well. The camera movement, you also have a lot of freedom over that, and we'll talk about that as, uh, later as well. <clears throat> so that's about it for our PowerPoint. Uh, right now we're going to get into our live demo, and uh, we, we're going to start with the scene setup. So I'm going to talk about a little bit about how you can set up stuff in your scene, move on to scene lighting, and then into a little bit of simple character animation, and move into props, uh, sound and visual effects and then camera movement and effects. And I'll kind of go through these as we move along. But first what I wanted to, I wanted to provide you guys with a link um, for the video, the final production for this. Uh, so I'm just going to copy this. I'm going to paste it into our GoToWebinar uh, chat window here. So I'm going to type a message. I'm going to just post that link. And if you have time, uh, you can check out that video. This is what the uh, final production looks like. Simply because uh, over GoToWebinar you may find a little bit of lag. Um, so I'm going to just post this YouTube link for you guys so you can check it out. Um, make sure you uh, like and subscribe. No, I'm just kidding. That's just my personal channel. So just go ahead and check it out if you have time. And we'll move to our, uh, our project right here. So this is our project. First, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to a preview camera. Now, the preview camera gives you freedom to move around your scene. And uh, you can see right here, I'm just going to rotate this camera around. And I'm going to turn off the grid there. And you can see this is this is our camera. Now, a couple things about this scene before we get started. Uh, it may be a little bit dark for you guys, but uh, I think it looks fine on my screen. Um, maybe just uh, increase your uh, your resolution here. So this is basically our uh, our scene right here, and it's kind of going to be like a drug dealing uh, gangster kind of scene. Uh, as you can see, we have a couple of characters. These are both from our uh, independent developers on the marketplace. This entire scene actually is from one of our uh, new developers, a Japanese developer. So everything you see here, this is all from independent developers, uh, every single item in the scene. 
Uh, none of this is actually Reillusion content uh, except for the special effects. So you can see that all of this stuff you can find in our marketplace. There's tons of uh, options available um, uh, to download uh, all kinds of cool new content. So I recommend you check it out. And I'll go to show you exactly what I'm talking about right now. So this is our marketplace, uh, city.reillusion.com slash marketplace. And if you go down here to 3D content, you can find all sorts of cool stuff. Um, you can find, uh, you know, monsters, uh, all kinds of cool. Well, we've got a lot of Halloween stuff on right now um, since Halloween's coming up. Uh, but all sorts of different content right here. Um, if I wanted to, I can, uh, you know, go into our Reillusion Select section, which is some of our uh, some of our better content. And you can see that we have all sorts of different uh, packs, everything from uh, tunes to uh, zombies to uh, scenes, and you can find our uh, content pack uh, that we're using in this um, webinar in the city marketplace as well. All right, so we'll just go back to our uh, our little webinar here, our little uh, project, and I'm going to go to my camera switch. Now, camera switch is the mode you switch to when you already have your camera set up, and that's what we have right now. So in this scene, I'm basically going to be deconstructing the scene for you. We're not going to be constructing something from scratch. I'm going to just be playing it back and deconstructing the steps for you. So I'm going to play this back first. Uh, let's make sure our volume is high enough. I think our volume is a little bit low there, just so we can hear it all. You came alone, right? There's no way I was followed. I got the drugs and got out of there fast. Brilliant. That's all I need to know. Farewell. I'd like to report a missing rail. <laughs> this isn't a bar, it's a diner. We serve food here. Food? Yeah, how about some tea? Yeah, right over here, sir. I'll break to her. Okay, so that's our scene right there. And I'll show you kind of the way that I've taken care of that scene, uh, the, w the way that I've created it, um, step by step here. So let's go back to our preview camera first of all. And in our live demo, the first thing we're going to talk about is scene setup. So importing some props and interior scene assembly. I'm going to show you a couple of quick, really, uh, really quick tips here for how to do that. Now, uh, for this, I'm going to go from pixel shading mode here, and I'm going to go to quick shading mode. And this is just an easier mode. You can see the scene is a bit lighter now. And this way, you're basically able to, it takes less resources on your computer. You're able to navigate your camera a lot faster, and you can see the scene without uh, shadows and everything like that. So you can kind of see the layout a bit more. So I'm going to just move over to these little pizza boxes over here in the corner, and I'm going to actually add some pizza boxes. I'm going to take this one pizza box at the top here. I'm going to show you a cool tool called Multiple Duplicate. So if you're, if you're creating like, uh, you know, walls or uh, windows or everything like that in your scene, this is a cool uh, little tool you can use. I'm going to grab this uh, top box here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this multiple times. We're going to use the multiple duplicate tool. You can also use the Shift D hotkey, and I'm going to just click that, and you can see that uh, right here we have a couple of pizza boxes that appear. And what I can do is I can move these pizza boxes using my little gizmo, and I can just place them on top of each other, just like that. So now we have a couple more pizza boxes added to my stack. Say I wanted to add like a really big stack of pizza boxes, I can go to the duplicates here and I can type in nine. And then you can see I have a big stack of like nine pizza boxes and they're not perfectly aligned. So I can just, you know, move this over here. And that pizza box, that stack of pizza boxes looks a little bit too neat. So what we can do is we can use the rotate gizmo and we can kind of rotate them in a little swirl like that or a little twirl like that. So you can see we have all those pizza boxes kind of um, lined up like that. If I press OK, that will um, keep those pizza boxes there. And what I can do is just maybe rotate these a little bit more, to, uh, rotate the individual ones to make them more random. Uh, you know, just move them around like that. Just so it looks a bit more random and not such a, like such a neat, perfect uh, mosaic of, of pizza boxes that would probably never happen if you're the kind of person that leaves pizza boxes around your, your, your place. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go ahead and delete these uh, nine pizza boxes I just added. Since uh, I just want to show you the, the multiple duplicate tool there. And so I'll go ahead and delete all those. And I can just bring my regular pizza box back on top. There we go. And everything's good to go. Now what I'm going to show you is another technique that you can use uh, 
for creating duplicates as well. Like if you're creating uh, duplicates, single duplicates, and you want them to be in a row, exactly in a row, this is a very good way to do it. I'm going to take a couple of these hangers in the closet here, and I'm going to delete them. Um, these hangers are also available in that content pack as well. So what I'm going to do here is take one of these hangers, and you can see I have this gizmo here. If you don't see this gizmo, press Control Q, and your gizmo will appear and disappear. Uh, you can see that I have this gizmo, I have this line, this green line here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold the Control key down, and I'm going to click and drag. And you can see that creates a single duplicate of that hanger. And if I hold the Control key down again, I can click and drag that, and I can create as many duplicates as I need. And they're all aligned along this axis right here. If I press, um, you can see it's basically aligned along the axis of this pole right here, and I have all of these hangers perfectly uh, set up. So that's basically it for uh, those. Are the, that's a couple of tips I'm going to give you for uh, scene assembly. Uh, we're not going to concentrate on that really in, the, in this webinar. We're going to concentrate more on um, you know cr making your scene beautiful and stuff like that. So back to our uh, live demo outline here. Now we're going to talk about lighting. We're going to talk about directional lighting and the spotlights uh, and point lights. So for this, I'm going to go back into my pixel shading mode. Actually, first I'm going to show you the background. I forgot to mention the background here. The stage on the stage tab in the 2D background section here, you can see if I zoom out of my scene here, we have this kind of uh, cool-looking city background uh, that I've imported in, and that is over here in the image background. You can select active. If I deactivate it, you can see it will disappear. I can select active and activate it again, uh, or I can just decide to uh, you know have a different color for my background scene as well. But because we're kind of trying to make this look realistic, we want to have this uh, active background. And you can see here that uh, it's kind of, we've set this display mode to fit. If I set the display mode to stretch, then we won't have that, uh, you know, that little area along the top and the bottom of my scene that is uh, colorful. And we'll just have the entire thing um, as my background image. And that looks just fine the way it is. You can see the, out the window there in the back, you can see the city. Um, it's just a little addition there. So let's get on to the lighting then. Uh, I'm going to go from quick shading to pixel shading one more time. And now you'll see that our scene gets a lot darker and a lot more moody. So let's go ahead and rotate around. And let's take a look at our, uh, our lights. So I'm going to minimize this content manager here. I'm going to minimize our props and our avatars. And we have a couple of lights here. We have directional spotlights and we have point lights. So you can see I'm actually using all of these. Now, Icon 5 is limited to 8 lights. However, Icon 6 will be uh, unlimited lights, actually. So you can look forward to that. You can create all sorts of different um, lighting scenarios uh, with Icon 6, uh, released next, uh, rather, December. And we'll get into that a little bit later in the Q&A session, I'm sure. So the first light we're going to talk about is this Light 01. And where is this Light 01? You can see it's right there on my scene. If I don't know where it is, I can just press the F hotkey, and it'll focus on that light. You can see uh, it's right here in front of my TV. Now why do I have a light oops, in front of my TV? That's because I'm going I'm to turn it on here. This is actually a spotlight that is facing this direction. So let's take a look at this light um, from the side angle here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to play back a little bit. And you can see that we have that light. Right. I'm going to just uh, turn down the volume on the dialogue there. You can see that light is kind of flickering on and off, and it's kind of simulating the appearance of a TV just flickering on and off. So the light is kind of just uh, reflecting off our two characters, and it's simulating that light that's coming from the TV. So what we can do is, like, uh, I'm going to press F3, go into my timeline, and I have this light 01 selected. If I go to the multiplier uh, track right here, you can see we have all sorts of keyframes in the multiplier track. Excuse me. And every single uh, keyframe here corresponds to a value, a multiplier value, on the top right in our modifier, modifier panel there. So if I go here, you can see the multiplier value is 1.5. If I go to this keyframe, it's 0 0.6. And uh, this keyframe, 2.0. Say, for example, I wanted to add a, another parameter, like right here, it's at 1.2. If I wanted to boost that up, I can press, uh, I can enter in a value of 5. And you can see if I enter in a value of 5, it becomes really, really bright, uh, brighter than the uh, normal TV would probably be. So I'll just leave that back down to uh, 1.2, and there you go. So what I've done is here is I've just randomly 
you know, added different multiplier values in that track. And as we move along, you can see that the TV is just flickering, and that's creating the illusion of a of an actual TV. And so I'll just turn that light off right there. And one thing as well, um, let's take a look at the TV. And this is how we're going to import in props. I'm just going to take a, a little aside from the lighting. We actually have this uh, TV, this movie right here. So if I'm going to I'm going to press play here. And you can see this is a scene that I've just downloaded from the uh, TV show I Love Lucy. And you're probably wondering how I got this into the scene. Well, actually, it's actually just an uh, image plane. So you can see if I move it over here, we have this video right here and the TV in the background. I'm going to go back to uh, quick shading mode just momentarily. And you can see there's our TV and the video is separate. So if I delete this video, I can go ahead to my Explorer and I have this video saved right here. Uh, this is the one right here, I believe. Yep. So I'm going to actually just take this video. This is a Windows Media uh, file video. I'm going to right-click and drag. Make sure you right-click and drag. And I'm going to go back to iClone. And I'm going to click and drag it into my scene right there. Now I have the option to import it as an image layer, a plane, or a billboard. And the plane is what I'm going to choose right now because the plane you can actually manipulate like a prop in your scene. So you can see when I import that in right away that the video shows in the background. And what I can do is just position that. So if I play it right now, you can see it's just like a plane. We can move it to the side to any different angle. And what I want to do is position that into my TV. So I can just use the rotate tool. Uh, the E hot key is the rotate tool, by the way. Um, rotate that. And then I can use my R hot key for scale. And I'll scale that down to a reasonable size, a little bit smaller than that. And then the W hot key is your transform gizmo. And that's going to move it into position. I'm going to press W again to go over here. And we're just going to kind of get this into position. That should be okay. And we'll try to move it back a little bit. There we go. And then we want to scale it down a little bit as well. So that's basically how you get it into, into position in your scene. And we have this uh, cool looking uh, TV, old school black and white TV. Maybe bring it up a little bit. There we go. There we go. Okay, and just down a little bit. And so there's our, uh, our scenes. Now we have I Love Lucy uh, showing on the TV. All right, so that's uh, just a little side that I forgot to add for the, uh, for the props. Let's go back to our lighting and the pixel shading mode right here. So we already talked about that light coming from the TV. Let's talk about the other lights. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and minimize the props here. Uh, the light 2, let's take a look at this. I'm going to press the F hot key again and focus on it. You can see the light 2 is coming from this lamp over by this uh, dirty mattress in the corner here. And if I show that light, you can see it's facing this direction right here. And I can rotate that light uh, to any angle I want. I can rotate it to face that way, uh, this way. Um, I can also change the color of that light. If I wanted to uh, make it a red light, for example, I can go ahead and choose something red. And then the lighting in that scene will be red. And it's very easy to set the lighting. Um, and, you know, you can change the multiplier value as well. I'm just going to undo that, the red lighting, and I'm going to change the multiplier to something like 3. And you can see that creates a lot more contrast in your lighting. So what you want to do is you want to fool around with these lights, and spotlights are used to create shadows. Um, so if I pan over a little bit here, you can see that this spotlight is actually creating a shadow on the wall there on the left-hand side. It's um, you know shining on this lamp and the ashtray and the little table there. We can kind of move that around. You, know, you can see right there the amount of light, but the shadow is still coming from the same angle. So that's basically, you know, how you can create really cool shadows in your scene. Always use directional or point lights, or rather, sorry, directional or spotlights. So I'm going to just take that one out, and light 3, you can see light 3 is over here. Light 3 is the same thing, except light 3 is focused on this lamp right here. And uh, if, I, if I rotate that, you can see I can move it up like that, or down like that. Now, there's a couple other things with spotlights. We have this uh, range. If we want to change the range of the spotlight, we can decrease the range to something really small. And you can see that if we take it down to like almost one or one or zero, it'll only shine in that local area right there. And if we, if we decrease the angle, you can see that the spotlight will really focus on that one area. And uh, maybe I can take that multiplier up to two so you can see a little bit better. Right down there, that's where the spotlight is showing. The angle is a little bit smaller, um, the fall off. If 
fall off is kind of making it uh, faded or very sharp. So you can see the fall off is very sharp right there, or the fade off uh, right there. The fall off is very faded right there. Let's maybe increase that angle again. So we're just kind of trying to create that uh, illusion, trying to increase the range, and we'll leave that back at 0 0.8. And well, so maybe turn it a little bit to shine more on our character there. All right, so there we have that lighting taken care of. Now light four is kind of the same thing. This one's actually in the closet. So let's uh, twirl around and we can take a look at our closet. And you can see now with uh, the pixel shading mode, we have those uh, hangers. They're casting shadows on the wall, which is pretty cool. And I can, uh, you know, move that around um, the spotlight right there to different directions. So this is how you can kind of create some really moody, really cool lighting. Um, so this is how Icon can be used for, you know, high quality CG production if you get your lighting and your materials all correct. So let's go into our point lights then really quickly. I'm going to press the F hotkey. And point lights are used for just ambient lighting. They're not used to cast shadows or anything. So keep that in mind. Point lights will not cast shadows. So if I turn this point light off right here, you can see that the shadows remain the same. But if I turn it on, it just kind of creates a little bit of ambient light just to kind of light things in your scene. So that looks a lot better uh, than it did before. So I turn it off again right here. There's no light, but the shadows remain the same. If I turn it on, then the shadows remain the same, but we have more ambient light in the scene. And the same thing I did over here with point light two. This one is in the closet. So if we turn this one off, we're just kind of, you know, creating more darkness at the top there. But we kind of want to create that ambient light at the top, so we turn that on. So I'm going to turn these off right now. And the third point light, that's just the other lamp by the bed right there. So that's an example right there of how you can use it to, you know, without that lamp or without that light right there, it kind of looks a little bit unnatural with just that spotlight. So we kind of want to turn that point light on just to create a little background ambient light. And that's one way, one cool way you can use point lights. Uh, so that's the difference between point lights and spotlights. Using them in combination is a really good idea as well. So the fourth light I'm going to show you here, this one's actually out in the world right here. So I'm going to press, I press the F hotkey to focus out of the uh, scene right there. And let's take a look at the back right here. This is just a, a other light that I created to kind of light up the background of our scene here. Now, even though this point light is below the house, if I turn it off, you can see that it just creates a little bit of ambient light along these boxes here. It actually goes through the floor and creates ambient light on these boxes. So if I press on, and then we pump that up to maybe one, you can see that lights are seen a lot more. And that's just focused around that background right there. So that's all I'm going to do with lighting for this in this case. Uh, let's go on to the next step here, which is uh, character animation. <coughs> we'll just do some very, very simple character animation uh, because I want to focus a little bit more on the, uh, the effects before and the cameras before we quit, before we go on to the uh, Q&A session. So I'm going to turn the uh, volume up again on our uh, vocal track right here. And let's play back. You came alone, right? Okay, so this guy says you came alone, right? Now I'm going to press F3 and go into the timeline. I'm going to select this character right here um, by choosing this quick selection tool, object related track right here. Let's go to the, his face track. And you can see here we've added an audio file. Now I'm going to show you where we got this audio file from. I'm going to first play back so you can see. You came alone, right? Okay, and then he takes a, a, a cigarette uh, puff right there. And what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to delete this audio file. You can see it starts at about frame, uh, or about frame 158 there, 159. I'm going to take this audio file and I'm going to delete it. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move over to my uh, Chrome here, and we have this uh, service through, through Reillusion called uh, Avatar uh, Text-to-Speech Audio Creation. And what this does, this creates stuff, uh, this creates a character dialogue, creates a voice from whatever you type into your scene. Uh, so I'm going to uh, click this Try It button right here, and I'm going to go ahead and show an avatar. You can check this out more on your own time. I'm just going to show you how you can quickly create a character dialogue. You know, if you don't have voice actors or something like that, this is a pretty important tool um, just to kind of do for, to use for previs or whatever. I'm just going to enter in something like this where he says, uh, you came alone, right? Question mark. 
And currently we have the uh, US English guy selected. If I press preview, you can see our character. Your team will... alone, right? All right, so you can tell it's a little bit different from the other guy. Uh, the other guy, we use the UK English. I can also decrease the pitch here if I want to make him have a manlier voice. You came alone, right? All right. And then we can go to the UK English guy as well and have him say the same dialogue. You came alone, right? All right. So you might recognize that one as the, uh, the voice that we used in our project. So I'm going to go back to icon here. And the way I move that, the way I add that to my scene, obviously, is to, it's a very, very quick process. Go to animation, go to facial animation. And then we have the option to uh, record our own voice. We can open an audio track, or we can actually use text-to-speech as well, which will use your uh, your computer's regular uh, you know, uh, voice text-to-speech option, which is not as good as the one uh, on the website. But if I just open this track, I'm going to open this Gangster 1 track. I downloaded this uh, from that text-to-speech service. So if I just go ahead and open that. You came alone, right. Okay, so that's basically how you can just add your uh, your facial animation to your character. And for his little cigarette, uh, little cigarette animation there, what I've done is I've actually gone to the motion track here, and uh, let's just uh, close this down here. Oops. And the motion track, if we move a little bit further on, you can see that he's just actually moving from here to here. He's lifting a cigarette to his uh, mouth. Now there should be a keyframe somewhere. Okay, anyways, he's moving from here to here. He's putting a cigarette back down. And, oh, sorry, we're in the, uh, okay, actually, this, is a, this has actually been saved as part of the clip already. Sorry, guys. Uh, so basically, if you want to, uh, you know, create a motion from here to here, we can just simply use our uh, motion editing tool. So if I go to the motion uh, section right here, and I go to edit motion layer, I can select my character's arm. And I can, you know, kind of move it up like that. And that creates a uh, keyframe here. And then if I went from here to here, you can see that I can create another keyframe. If I wanted it to be a little bit different, like over here, I can modify that motion. Right. There's no way. And so he wouldn't move all the way up to his mouth. So that's what I was uh, looking for before. You just create those little keyframes, and you can ma manipulate the timing of those and everything like that as well. So that's all we'll really do for character motion. The character motion where our character was uh, kind of falling back after he got shot. Let's take a look at that one really quickly before we move on. So I'm going to go here, and this is our G5 Eddie. Uh, I'm going to go to our motion track right here. Now take a look. Basically, all of his motions are just your simple... Uh, There's no way I was followed. I got the drugs and got out of it. His simple puppet motions. They're fast. I'm going to close this one down here. Brilliant. That's all I need to know. So you can see here, he stops moving. He has no motions because he does, no longer has body puppeteering. But all I was doing for him for that entire time is going to animations, motion puppet. And in the motion puppet tool, I just use one of these uh, idle motions here. And you can use this uh, board one, for example. And just take a look at his body when I, when I do this. If we press preview, he'll have the board motion. But if we want, we can actually mask out certain parts of the body. So we'll mask out his arms and his uh, hand right there. And then we preview this. He'll just move the one arm. And if, we won't, if we don't want it to move so fast, we can actually decrease the exaggeration as well and preview that. Farewell. All right, so you can just do stuff like that. And that's how I created the animation for him in the first part of the scene. And then we have this audio or this uh, clip that I added here. This is called the killed clip. And this is from one of our content packs in the content store. And if I scroll through here, you can see basically he just gets blown away. And that's about all there is to it. That's just another clip, and he falls on the ground. So that's a, a, a preset clip that we've just added. Now, the last thing I want to show you quickly is how I added this special effect of the window. So the window right here, you can see at this point, there's a point here where it smashes like that right there. And the way we did that is that's actually a special effect that we downloaded from the content store as well. So if I was to remove all animation, right-click that and select remove all animation, we'll no longer have that smash, but our character will still fall back. So what I want to do is at this point right here, right-click on it, 
and select, uh, whoops, I want to make sure we have the window selected there. Yeah, right click it and select perform. This is a smart prop and so it has the option to explode. So you can see that made the window explode. I'd like to report a missing Again, <laughs> it's a very simple uh, just right click and right click command. So you can see the slow motion right there of the window shattering. And that's a very simple special effect. And we also have a special effect uh, with the character, the smoke on the character as well. Uh, I wanted to mention this one. There's two different uh, smoke uh, special effects, particle effects uh, on this character. The first one is coming from a cigarette. So you can see with the cigarette right there, let's zoom in really close on the cigarette. Uh, if I press play, you'll see that there's a nice stream right. of cigarette smoke there's coming no up from following. a cigarette. I got the drugs and got out of there fast. Now that, that uh, cigarette effect is actually from one of our developers on the marketplace as well. So you can just type in, uh, you know, go to our marketplace and you can search in like a cigarette. Oops. And the one I use was actually this one right here from Big Strike, the cigarette smoke emitter. So you can just simply add that to your scene as a dummy and it'll create, it'll emit that smoke. The other uh, smoke effect that I added was our character um, smoking, uh, blowing out the smoke. So after he takes his uh, cigarette, then he blows out smoke like this. And now that was just a smoke effect that I added. So if I go to our particle effects right here, we can see this small smoke. And if I want, I can have, the way I did that is I keyed it. So when you want the smoke to start, you just go over here and we have this emit on and emit off. And that's keyable. So if I want to start that smoke, uh, maybe a little bit earlier, this is going to look weird, but if I want to start it earlier, I can start emit over here and then play back. There's no way I was followed. And so I he'll start smoking. And got out of there. He'll start exhaling even before he takes, even before he inhales a cigarette. So you basically just turn emit on and off when you want the smoke to start and stop. And there's all sorts of parameters here that you can mess around with as well. Uh, I don't have time to go into these parameters in this webinar, uh, but we do have tutorials on that on our website. And if you have any questions as well, you can email me at developer at reillusion.com for those as well. Uh, now, the last thing I wanted to show you before our Q&A is just a quick little uh, look at the cameras. So here I'm going to actually go to my, pre I'm just going to stay in my preview camera here. And I'm going to show you the different types of cameras that you can add. Um, so let's take a look at your typical uh, dialogue scene between two characters. Um, so if we wanted to have a scene like this where that character is off in the distance and this character is closer to the uh, camera, you can go to our stage tab here, and there's all sorts of options here we have for lens settings. If I go to like 800 millimeter, the, the, the higher the uh, focal length of your uh, of your lens, basically the closer it's going to make everything look in your scene. So it's going to be less of a less of a feeling of depth. So you can see with the 80 millimeter, everything looks a little bit closer together. But if I go to the 20 millimeter, you can see that it really uh, exaggerates that distance between the two characters. So it really depends on what kind of effect you're going for or what sort of, uh, you know, feeling, uh, mood you're going for in your scene. You can set keys to these lenses as well, so they can, they can transition from one to the other. Um, but if dialogue, if you have a dialogue scene, normally you want a, a higher focal length. So something like this, if there's two characters talking, you'll want to have something that looks like this. And then if you want to add to that, you can actually use this depth of field. And what this will do is this will blur everything out. And if I can choose to pick a target here, I can pick my character's face. And you can see that now this character is focused and this character is out of focus. So that's a, a really cool effect that you can just quickly add in um, for a dialogue scene. And you can have the depth of field transition from one character to the other. If I want to have a higher range, I can choose like 500, for example. And you can see this character a little bit clearer. But I think it looks better maybe as something around 200 uh, like that. And this would be a very uh, good looking dialogue scene. So. If you use the right lighting, the right materials, and, and uh, the right camera work, you can actually get some really good effects uh, from iClone 5. And iClone 6 will, look, uh, will only look even better than this as well. Um, so that's basically it. So I'm going to end the live demo right there, and we're going to move on to a quick Q&A session. We have about uh, five, ten, or 10 minutes, I'd say, for the Q&A session. So uh, I'm going to move on to the uh, questions tab here. We're going to bring that up and take a look at some of the questions. 
Um, so if you have any questions, feel free to enter them into the questions section, and I will answer, the, answer those right now for you. I know we went through a lot of this stuff uh, pretty quickly, uh, but if you have any questions, I can explain them for you. So uh, Don Evelyn says, uh, can I get a recording of this webinar session when it's over? Uh, yes, this webinar will be uh, published on our YouTube channel, so uh, you can go ahead and check out the YouTube channel. There's also a lot of other tutorials on the YouTube channel that go, in, go, go more into depth on all the features that I showed uh, in, this, uh, in this webinar as well. All right, so uh, basically, doo -doo 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 -doo. Uh, Gary asks, should I purchase iClone now or wait until the next version of it? Well, basically, uh, we have a number of different deals on. Um, uh, one of the best deals, uh, you, you saw all the content that I used in this scene. Uh, this is a really good deal, I think. Um, all the content that I used in this scene, such as the, the characters, uh, the, uh, the house, the sofas, everything like that, those were all purchased, like I, meant, like I mentioned, from the content store, uh, from the marketplace. <coughs> so we have, a, we have an offer on right now where if you buy, I think it's $199 of content, uh, $199 for, of content, uh, you can actually get iClone 6 for free. So even if you have iClone 5 and you buy like $199 of content, you can just get iClone 6 for free. And if you already have iClone 5 and you buy that content, you get a free upgrade to iClone 6 as well. So we're really trying to push a lot of the content right now, as you can, as you can see. Uh, but it's an excellent deal. I mean, you're getting, you're getting a, a double positive, uh, really right there. You're getting a lot of extra content and you're getting the free upgrade to iClone 6. Uh, I, just saw, I just saw a question here uh, that, that is relevant to what I'm talking about right now from Dave. Uh, he says, will all G3 stuff work with iClone 6? Uh, yes, it will. So all the uh, previous models from previous versions will still work with iClone 6. Um, however, obviously, the iClone 6 stuff won't work with uh, previous uh, versions of iClone. Um, so I hope, I hope that answers your question there, Gary. Uh, and Anita asks, uh, mentioned the shortcut keys you're using. Uh, yeah, it may be a little bit of lag uh, for my mouse movements. The main, the main uh, hot keys you want to remember are W, E, and R. Now, if you have, um, let me just go quickly into my scene here and select something. Uh, let's turn off that uh, depth of field first. I'm going to go into my scene and, and uh, select uh, my TV there. Uh, if I select the TV and I control select the uh, um, little video there, take a look. Right now we have this rotation gizmo, so I can rotate my TV around like that. Uh, if I press the W hotkey, that'll change to a transform gizmo where I can move um, my TV up and down. And if I change, if I press the R hotkey, that will change, excuse me, to a scale gizmo where I can scale it smaller or larger. So those are the three main hotkeys that you want to pay attention to. Uh, those are the most important, W, E, and R. Again, transform for W, E is rotate, and R is scale. And also F3 for the timeline. That's also a very important one. Uh, I use that one all the time. So press F3 to go into your timeline really quickly. <coughs> uh, so Kenneth Barnes asks, how are you zooming in and out? Um, for this, uh, basically, I'm holding the alt, hot, hot, uh, the alt key. The way that I do it is I hold the halt hold the Alt key, hold the Alt key, and I click both mouse buttons, and I move in and out. So I can hold the Alt key and right click to move around my scene. I can hold the Alt key and left click to pan around my scene, to pan around the item. And if I hold the right key, I can pan around that item. And if I hold both mouse keys and zoom in and out, I can go like this and zoom in and out. So that's basically um, how I'm moving around my scene. Uh, we have a tutorial on that on our YouTube channel. I recommend you check out. It's just just very basic stuff. Um, ba -da -ba -ba -ba. So Pierre asks, does iClone offer a four view of the scene so that you can position elements based on the top front? Okay, very good question, Pierre. So Pierre is asking, uh, is there is there a, is there a four view um, basically of your scene like you have in Max or Maya? You can select uh, you can see an object from the top from the bottom from the side and from whatever. Uh, iClone 6 might have this, I, I believe. Uh, we do have the option to customize your UI. So I believe you may be able to uh, to do that in iClone 6. Don't quote me on that for sure, but uh, I would recommend keeping up to date on the videos. Um, you can maybe email me at developer at reillusion.com. Uh, when I get a chance to ask the engineering team about that, I will. 
and I can give you a solid answer at that time. Uh, so Kenneth asks uh, the key shortcut to show the light. Uh, when you want to show your lights in the scene, um, all you want to do is go to your lights on the side, and if I choose this light, for example, I just press the F hotkey, and it'll focus on that. This is a very, very useful hotkey as well. Um, the F hotkey will allow you to focus on anything in your scene. So even if right now we can't see anything in the scene, if we're totally black, if I go to my props and I select the sofa, and I press the F hotkey, you can see it will focus on that sofa, and I can just rotate around, and where are we? To zoom in a little bit. I think we're on the outside of the building. There we go. So just zoom in a little bit on that, and you can see the uh, sofa right there. It's selected. So anything in your scene, if you press the F hotkey, it'll focus on it. So I can select that lamp over there, press F, and it'll focus on that lamp. Of course, it doesn't know what direction the wall is in, but um, it'll center the view around that lamp. The F hotkey, very useful um, for you know focusing on stuff in your scene. Uh, okay, so Don asks, uh, in the future, will you port this to Mac OS? Uh, we have currently don't have any plans to pl uh, port this to Mac OS X, unfortunately, but hopefully we will do that in the future. We do have our Crazy Talk Animator 2 uh, ported to Mac OS, um, but with iClone, we're PC only at the, at the current time, uh, and iClone 6 will be a PC only release as well. Um, so BP I do asks, is there a facial capture system that works with iClone? Uh, yeah, basically you can import in facial animation data. Uh, it would have to be in FBX or BVH format. With iClone 6, um, not the immediate release, but later on um, in a future patch of iClone 6, we're going to be experimenting with uh, facial motion capture as well, um, similar to the, what we have with the Microsoft Connect sensor right now, but that will be in a later patch. Um, so don't expect that right away uh, when iClone 6 is released. Uh, and Thomas asks, do you have training for drawing avatar characters? You don't actually use um, iClone to create your characters from scratch. Um, what you can do is you can use iClone to create your character and then modify uh, the facial features and modify the clothing. So normally what you'll do is you'll, you'll create your character in a program such as Max or Maya, and then you'll import that into iClone uh, via 3D Exchange. Uh, in FBX format. Uh, okay, um, so can I clone export? Robert asks, can I clone export animation to transparent PNG like Crazy Talk Animator can? Yes, you can export transparent video uh, from iClone, uh, no problem. Um, also transparent PNGs as well. Uh, and we can talk about that maybe in a later tutorial if I get around to making one of those. And uh, da, 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 da. so Kenneth Barnes asks about. Uh, if, is there a deal right, right, right now with 3D Exchange and iClone 6? If you buy 3D Exchange, will you get iClone 6 for free? Uh, currently, we don't have a deal like that. And, uh, well, yeah, we do? Okay, I guess we do. Um, so <laughs> check the website. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not really a sales dude, so I'm not sure about all, all the deals. But um, on the website, you can, you can check that out. Um, we have a section of the website dedicated to, uh, to iClone 6. So you can definitely uh, check that out for more information. Or you can email sales at reillusion.com. They'll, they'll be able to tell you, uh, you know, all the details on that stuff. Um, so Pat asks, is there a list of all the hotkeys? Um, in the help file uh, for, for Crazy Talk, or not Crazy Talk, rather, iClone, in the help files, there is a list of hotkeys uh, you can find. Um, so check through the, uh, the help file. You can go up here to help right there, and then you can just uh, search under hotkeys, and you should be able to find that list of hotkeys there. Um, okay, <laughs> so Robert asks, can I take a low-poly character and import it into Crazy Talk Animator? Uh, no, because uh, Icon is 3D, Crazy Talk Animator is 2D. Um, the character composition is completely different, so you wouldn't be able to do that, unfortunately. Uh, but you can create, uh, you know, 3D characters in Icon and use them for 2D animations in Crazy Talk if you want. Um, and someone asked, do you need iClone 5 and 6? No, you don't need iClone 5 if you have 6. 6 is better. So just use 6 instead of, uh, you don't need 5 and 6. Um, so Miguel asks, is there going to be any changes for the Toon Shader uh, renderer in iClone 6? Uh, for renderer, uh, we will have a new renderer called uh, Indigo. Uh, you can check that out. It's, it's called Indigo Renderer, so I-N-D-I-G-O. Uh, and that's going to be the new iClone render. We're going to offer that with iClone 6 as a separate plugin. 
Um, as for the tune shader, I'm not sure. I, I don't have any information about the tune shader right now, um, but it's possible. But we do have a lot better rendering capabilities. So I haven't seen actually tune shader used with the new renderer yet, but uh, I assume they would actually look a lot better. So you can, I guess you can look forward to that. Um, the tune shader uh, will probably look a lot better with the new iClone 6 renderer. And uh, Dave asks, can we use our own faces in iClone 6? Uh, just like iClone 5, uh, yes, you can. That feature will still be there. Um, you can map your 2D uh, image to the 3D model's face, um, so we won't be changing that. Uh, Pat Murphy asks, is what, what's a good motion capture device? Uh, the Connect motion capture, uh, motion capture is the one that we recommend, uh, Connect for Windows, and that's fully compatible with the iClone uh, motion capture plugin. Uh, again, that's Connect for Windows. Uh, make sure that you get that one because that one allows for uh, rotation of the head and rotation of the wrists as well. So it's a bit more freedom. Um, so Don asks, does lip, -sync, does lip Sync work just like Crazy Talk Animator 2? Uh, yes, it does. I know I only showed you a brief example of the Lip Sync in this, on this little webinar here, but we do have lots of tutorials for Lip Sync in both Crazy Talk 7, uh, Crazy Talk Animator, and Icon as well. But they all use the same technology. They're all driven by the same uh, automatic lip sync technology. So you can uh, check out those tutorials for more information on that. And Thomas asks, can you develop a character avatar in Blender? Uh, yes, definitely Blender is one of those programs where you can create your character from scratch and Blender is also free. So uh, Blender is a really great program to get started um, for creating your character. And then you can import that into iClone for animation and for uh, other stuff as well. Um, so Wayne asks, how many seconds are max in the timeline? Uh, actually, I don't know. Um, I think <laughs> the timeline, you can, you can stretch it out to as long as you want. Um, however, keep in mind that the longer your uh, project is, the more resources it will take up on your computer. I recommend keeping your timeline, I think, to about uh, normally under about 3,000 or 4,000. Um, you know, save a separate project uh, and, you know, continue. You, you can have different projects for different sections of your, of your movie, obviously. Uh, but you don't want too many frames or too many seconds in one project. Otherwise, that'll take forever to load. And, uh, you know, you want to save your system resources as well. Um, so Stan asks, is there a content manager for iClone 6 that will install our content automatically so we won't have to download it ourselves? Um, now, that's kind of a complicated question because uh, with Crazy to or rather with uh, the content store content, when you download it, it, it comes with an installer which allows you to install that automatically, and it installs it to your, to your iClone automatically. However, if you download from the marketplace, you have the ability, it just downloads it to a folder, and you have the ability to move that from one folder to another uh, in iClone. And iClone 6 will come with a fully customizable UI. You'll have fully customizable folders, uh, so you can really organize your stuff as, however you want. Uh, so once you download it, uh, you, you, maybe you want to move it into this folder for a separate project, you can do that as well. Okay, <laughs> good. So Kenneth says this was very informative, not boring at all. Good. I'm glad it wasn't boring. <laughs> so I'm glad you were a little, you were entertained uh, by this webinar. Uh, so a couple more questions, and then we're gonna uh, call it quits on this webinar here. Uh, Dave asks, are the different characters and props in iClone six or the same in iClone five? Very good question, Dave. In iClone 6, we will have G6 characters. So they will be brand new, uh, really cool looking characters. We will be releasing preview images of them uh, very shortly, I believe. Uh, we will also have a preview video for iClone 6 that will be launched in the next month, I believe. So you can uh, stay tuned to our YouTube channel, stay tuned to the website for, uh, for new updates on iClone 6. But the, the new G6 characters look really awesome, uh, really well done and a lot better than, than uh, iCone 5, definitely. I can say that with full confidence. Um, so will it be Clone Cloth in iCone 6? Uh, the G6 characters, they'll be a little bit different. Uh, their, their composition will be a little bit different uh, from G5 characters. So we will have different characters with different designs. Uh, we won't necessarily have uh, exchangeable uppers and lowers and stuff like that. But that's kind of a complicated issue, so we'll talk a little bit more about that uh, later. Maybe you can email me at developer at relusion.com or kai at relusion.com, and I'll talk more about that with you as well. I can give you in more information on that. Um, ba -ba -ba. So Robert asks, can I use an icon character and convert for 2D use? 
in Crazy Talk Animator. You can you can transfer the animation, but you cannot transfer the characters. Uh, so iClone 6, uh, Bridget asks, when will iClone 6 be available? Uh, you can pre-order it right now already, I believe. Uh, you can pre-order it right now. Uh, it will be launched, I believe, in mid-December, early December. That's what we're uh, we're aiming for right now. Um, so it'll probably it'll definitely be released before uh, you know 2015, but uh, sometime in December is what I can give you a uh, give you some preview for right now. Uh, but Saul asks, um, is there a few steps I can take first because you're I'm a newbie and I haven't used your software? Uh, Saul, in our in our website um, we have a training section uh, for iClone. If you go to uh, reillusion.com. Um, and you go to our iClone section. I'm just going to move this uh, folder over here. We go to products and we go to iClone. We have a training resources page that you can check out. Uh, where is the training resources? Down here. So training resources home. And we have all sorts of uh, quick fix tutorials for your first look at iClone 5. So if you're really new to iClone 5, I recommend checking out these tutorials. They're very simple, very short, and very to the point. Um, and these are kind of like a good introduction to how to use iClone. And then there's all kinds of other tutorials down here as well. You can just check out these links. Or alternately, you can also go to our YouTube channel and uh, just check out our videos and our playlists on the YouTube channel as well. Um, so Kenneth asks about the render time with iClone 5 and 6. Well, iClone 6 will use Indigo Renderer. Um, so for a higher quality renderer, you'll need a little bit more time. Um, so I can't really speculate exactly on how much time, but it really depends on your project, I guess. So, um, Okay, so Robert asks, what's the purpose of the Exchange add-on? <clears throat> so this is important for a lot of, a lot of, you, may, a lot of you who may not be familiar with uh, iClone 6, or rather iClone and 3D Exchange. iClone is the software that you use to do the animation and uh, create your scenes and everything like that. 3D Exchange is the program that allows you to convert external assets and import them into iClone. So if you have a model from a 3D Warehouse or a model from Maya or a model from Max, you can import those into iClone and you have to go through 3D Exchange first. So you import those into 3D Exchange and 3D Exchange will convert that into the version that uh, iClone can use. And you can also do vice versa. If you want to use your animations um, from iClone in Max or Maya, you can also convert those into FBX or BVH format and export them to your project in Max and Maya as well. All right, so I hope that answers the question about uh, about the 3D Exchange. Um, I guess that's about it. We are kind of running out of time here for the webinar, so hopefully you guys enjoyed the webinar again. I know I went through a lot of things pretty fast, but we do have other tutorials on our YouTube channel that deal with spe uh, specific uh, st topics and, and items and stuff like that. And of course, if you have any more questions, you can email me at developer at reillusion.com. Uh, we will have a survey that we will email out to everybody as well. Um, fill out the survey. We'll give you a free copy of our iClone training DVD. Um, so I, I recommend you fill out that survey uh, just so we can get some more feedback from you guys uh, as far as what, what kind of stuff you're looking forward to in the future for webinars and how you enjoyed this webinar and all that fun stuff. So uh, again, yeah, make sure you fill out that uh, survey. We will email that out to each, each, each and every one of you and you'll get your free iClone training DVD. All right, so that's about it uh, for this webinar. I'm gonna, I'm gonna end it off right now. So uh, again, everyone, thanks for watching and have a good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever you are in the world and take care.